I want to cover into a little bit more gory detail on how I modded my Akaso EK7000 action cam. As you can see right now, all I have is some 32 gauge Kynar wire sticking out of the side with a standard 3 pin headphone jack. I've already done a, a quick demo on the mic quality and it's okay. It's acceptable now. Uh, if you're not already familiar on how to take this thing apart, you just use a uh, little pry tool. This thing pops right off. And then there's four screws. Be a little bit ginger. Be careful because these two screw, uh, these two switches, and this switch right here. This one especially will go free floating. And again, if this is the first time you're watching a video about this camera, the screen is attached to the main PCB by a flat flex cable, and it's uh, you, you cannot de detach it or disconnect it. So be really careful. The way I uh, I get mine apart is I just stick kind of jam my fingers in there and I kind of pull it apart gently like that. Uh, uh, you could just pull it like that by the uh, camera assembly, but hey, whatever gets the job done. Now, the problem that I have, well, let's get this button out of here. So, that's our power button. That's immediately going to fall out. I'm going to go and put this with the, uh, the rest of our parts, along with our screws and whatnot. Now, you can see right over here is where I did my modification. This is where they tucked the microphone, and because it was so far tucked back into the camera, the audio pickup was just absolutely abysmal. Now, if you haven't seen the video again, there's that little ribbon cable inside. Okay? That thing is nigh impossible to try to disconnect. Reason being is they installed the LCD and then basically thermoformed the entire a casing around the LCD inside. So the only way for me to wind up soldering uh, anything to this was basically take a pair of tweezers and uh, let's get this guy out of the way. Just come in here and allow this to give us some pressure separating the area but also not as to put too much pressure on the flat flex ribbon cable and the uh, the hood as to break it. So once I was able to get into this angle, it was pretty... I'll try to get a little tight of a, tight of a shot. Let me try to get a fo better focus here. So there is your microphone. Set my solder station to about 230 degrees Celsius. And there was just one more little thing there. If I, if I get some light in here, you can see that flat flex cable. But uh, this is just a quick shot vid. So get a little bit better of an idea of what you're looking at space-wise. Now, internally, I had to make a modification right here. Okay, There was a diagonal piece of plastic that was part of the... Uh, original support structure. I'm not specifically sure why it was there. It didn't offer any sort of real support. So after uh, just using a uh, disposable scalpel, I would not go in here with a rotary tool. That's recipe for disaster. That's just very poor thinking right there. So I just went in and I just shaved this diagonal piece away, which should allow me enough space as to fit a 3.5 inch millimeter headphone jack. You can go 2.5. Now I'm, I'm not gonna, this thing keeps going out of focus. So the idea is to get this 3.5 inch jack to fit inside. I intend on putting a switched jack and then putting a microphone right here in the camera in a future date. It's not, an, I mean, once you put the camera inside the enclosure like this, an internal microphone's just gonna be equally as poor as the the original one so I just find it kind of moot plus there's also a slight mm, let's call it an entropy a metal piece right there where our, you know we shaved away a diagonal piece of plastic that metal piece is the Wi-Fi antenna I've already done a test video uh, streaming from the camera to my phone while recording uh, audio and it didn't really seem to impact it and it was quite literally in this form so uh, what I'm gonna do uh, up next is well, well huh. here's another reason why of putting a jack over here if you notice that these T 
TRS jacks have a collar on them, and those collars have to be somewhat flush with the plastic. And by putting it over here in the location right here, this plastic is a bit more flexible. If I could just get my fingernail there. Yeah, this, this area is a bit more flexible than, than other areas just because, you know, it's just right almost smack dab in the middle. So being that it's a bit more flexible, when I have to weasel this thing back together in one piece, this area is going to want to, or it's, it, the, it's going to require to, to bow outward a bit. So I'm a little concerned about when I put this together because, look, notice how this is already snagging. And that's because these two buttons are hitting the physical hardware buttons. So when you put it back together, also make sure that this little guy right here is lined up correctly with all their little pegs and holes and enamel wire. Be really careful not to uh, mess that up. But, uh, yeah, getting getting it back in is a little bit tricky. And it's mainly because you have to get that power button back in through the bat uh, through, uh, through this weaseling weaseling through with tweezers trying to figure out uh you know diagonally with this thing open like so how you're going to get that button realigned the plastic uh uh the pl plastic button cap and then you got to get it realigned with these guys and then on top of that I'm adding a a collar on the other side I mean come on how much pressure are we going to put on the outside of this case and then we got to drill a hole in the side of this guy and if you think about it, when you have a headphone jack plugging in, right, the reason we have this collar, right, around the jack is so we know that it's it's properly seated. So we got to make sure that this collar is going to be properly supported and not protruding too much because if we wind up having the collar protruding out too much, we're putting too much pressure on the side of this mod on the case and on top of that we're running into the plastic enclosure that we're going to be keeping it in i mean sure you know it may not be waterproof after what we're going to do with it by the way this is not a waterproof case so it doesn't matter but point being is the uh the thickness of this plat of the, the thickness of this plastic of this case right here you know when we insert this jack is that going to still make contact with our camera but I really don't care because there is this mount for the camera. So it doesn't actually have to be inside of, you know, this so-called weatherproof or waterproof enclosure. So, you know, if you're going to do this mod or a mod to a GoPro or action camera like this, uh, my high recommendation is don't expect to put it back into its uh, waterproofing or acrylic casing. Uh, simple because you're adding more design complexities and if you can get one of these you know braces for your action cam after modding it uh, I'd probably do much off better ado in the long run and whatnot okay that's it for now I still have a little bit of time behind the bench so I can finish this mod up and I'm sure once it is done I'll be doing another video until next time cheers beers and bunny ears fuckers